Hi, so I'm going to show you this thing that I decided to call uh, Kaba. So, yeah, it's just another Voxel um, renderer, but this one was written in WebGPU, which is a new thing that, oops, that I think recently just came out for Chrome. So Chrome supports it, and Firefox and Safari are still working on it. Chrome only supports it for... Uh, on Windows and Mac OS and Chrome OS. And on Windows, it only works for if you have Direct3D version 12. Um, so if you have like an older graphics card, it won't work. But here, yeah, it's just cubes. You, you can't, cl you just float through them. I didn't do collision yet. And I, did, I don't think, uh, what else? There's no, you, all you can do is fly. You can't destroy or place blocks. There's no like ray casting and stuff. But like the main purpose of this project was to figure out rendering. Because I wanted to learn WebGPU. WebGPU is very nice. I'm going to show you my shader code. Um, yeah, so there's a mix of glass blocks, stone blocks. Each chunk is 32 by 32 blocks. So if I, oops, if I show you the side of it, the current world gen that I have is um, it starts out so like the blocks are randomly placed, but the frequency of the blocks increases or decreases as you go as you go up. So like. The bottom layer here has is like all all flat, and then at the top it's like very scattered. Um, that was so that I can test like. So what I did add is inside in between blocks, if they're like two adjacent solid blocks, it won't have a face. So here there's like a hole, right? And then here you can't, you probably wouldn't be able to stick your head inside this normally. So what's the point of rendering block faces here? Um, but what I didn't add is between chunks, it doesn't check like whether to show faces or not. So here you can see that um, the glass blocks that face the stone blocks here, they shouldn't, they aren't, you aren't going to be able to see them, but it renders them anyways, because I, I haven't bothered adding check for them. But the main purpose of this wasn't like stuff I've already done before, but just the rendering. Um, so if you notice along the corners here, there's like a blur effect. Um, and also some chromatic aberration. There's also a slight vignette, so it gets darker towards the edges. Uh, vignette? Vignette? Vignette. Um, yeah. So along the corners, you can see like the color channels are being separated. So it's like slightly red here, slightly blue there, blue there, and it's only around the edges of the screen with some blur blurring. Um, I don't think it's actually these, this is actually a good thing for like if you wanted to make an actual game. It's probably not great for a gamer's experience, but this was again mostly a rend like a rendering experiment. So I decided to add it for funsies. Um, yeah, so I've already made something similar before. Um, so I think my first not this one. My first one was this. This was rendered with canvas. I don't know when I made it. Oh, it's pretty old. It's like 2017 or 2018. I don't know. But this was rendered with canvas rather than like something that's actually meant for 3D. But it works pretty well. There's some block breaking and placing. But as you can see, it, it's really weird. Um, the ray casting is off. I don't know why, but eh, ray casting is hard. Okay, yeah, it, it feels like it feels like you're more like spraying a paint can than actually like looking at the block. So that was my first version, uh, but it did support uh, translucent blocks. I think yeah. So that was pretty cool. And then my later version here. This one's a bit more better. It's actually working um, ray casting here. So you can like look at blocks and place blocks, and it feels pretty good. And there's a single translucent block here. But other than that, yeah. So I think this does support... Uh, oh, it supports collision as well. You can't go through blocks, which means I can't test like whether or not it shows block faces between... But I, I think, I think, like, between these two blocks, these are separate chunks. This is one chunk, and this is another chunk. Um, it calls block faces in between. That's cool. Yeah, this one's pretty good, but so I made it again. But this one I think performs better. I don't know. So what I can do is uh, throw up. 
uh, edit the code. So instead of uh, three by three chunks, I can make it go from negative five to five on each th in the x and z directions. And so that will give me. So it takes some time to load, but after that, and the frame rate is not great, but it's like it doesn't kill my browser, right? It's kind of cool. If I I think I can sh rent show the the frame rate. It's above 30 frames per second, so this works better than a Scratch game, which is <laughs> low standards, but it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Um, and I think I could still do some optimizations. Um, so one optimization that I could make is that currently every block face, like every square here is its own face. But there's something called greedy meshing where, like, at the bottom here, this entire big chunk is one square. And then that apparently is a common optimization. But I didn't do that because that's like a CPU thing. And this project is more of a GPU test. Um, so if I switch it over to the code, very cool. Okay. So the shader here. Um, Okay, so this is a very primitive implementation. It just like loops through all the blocks in, the, in each chunk, and then it just checks each neighbor around the block and sees if it should add a face or not. And so this this faces list is what's being passed into my shader, and all it includes is the block and the direction of the face. It's so like whether it's the top face or the bottom face, and then in the shader here, so the vertex shader, a shader is like a function that runs on the GPU. So like it takes in all of the faces that I pass in here called data. And then it just outputs vertices of a square. Um, and WebGPU likes to deal with everything in triangles. So a square has six vertices because it, ha it has two, two triangles. OK, so. Let me demonstrate. This is a square, and if WebGPU likes to deal with everything in triangles, we need to split this in half, and so there is two triangles. And each triangle has one, two, three vertices, and then there are two of them, so here's the other two. Yeah, there's duplicate vertices, and that's kind of annoying, which is why I'm only passing in the face data. So first, I extract the position, like the x, y, z coordinates, and also the um, the direction of the face. And then it, so I'm running this function six times uh, per per face, and it just takes the the corresponding vertex in the square here, and then it like rotates it around the square until it faces the right direction. So this part gets the corresponding vertex in the square, and then this part rotates it. And then down here, it output, like it returns the, the vertex. And then here, this is the fragment shader. The fragment shader is a function that runs on every pixel on your screen. And it takes in the vertex from the square, and it returns a color. So here, um, I'm taking the color of the pixel in the block texture. So like, it's given like a position here, and it figures out that oh, it, it should return the light gray pixel, and so it does that, and it also multiplies it by the darkness. So if you look at like these cubes are like this, uh, um, the same color on all sides, but there's like some basic shading here where it makes some faces darker than the others. So you can like tell which which side you're looking at. So um, that's what this darkness thing is for. And then I have a separate shader for the blur effect around the, the edges um, here. So this part, the vertex shader here just returns a square, um, which is like, or I guess a rectangle. It's like the corners of your screen. And in the fragment shader for every pixel, it figures out what the vignette value should be. So this function here, I stole it from sh from someone else. So this is the vignette shader that I found on the shader toy. Um, I don't know how, I, I mean, yeah. I just looked at it, I was like, wow, what does this mean? So I plugged it into Desmos, and I played around with it. 
it's like it's like there's four asymptotes on like two on in each direction and that's what creates like this kind of cool I don't know what to call it but it like makes it darker more in the corners than like as a circle in the middle of the screen so that's kind of cool um, and so yeah I just, I just copied it for this thing and so for the chromatic aberration here I just split the color channel so for the red color it takes the pixel from the screen slightly to the right and for the blue pixel it takes the color from slightly to the left and so that causes like a slight offset in the color channels which creates like a cool chromatic aberration effect and finally for the blurring I have a blur function here these are just the coefficients of the Gaussian function which it's like e to the minus negative x squared it's not really important but it has a nice um, like a nice curve which is good for blurring and so just it just like takes uh, nine samples nine pixels around the current pixel that you're working on and it like multiplies them by these numbers and adds them up so it's like taking a weighted average of the pixels around it and that's how you blur the screen oh, hopefully the Kava is not a offensive name like I just took it because there's this, the emoji for it it's like a cube that uh, people circumambulate around um, for I think Islam but since there's emoji, I, I like the name because it, it sounds like cube Apparently it just means cube in Arabic, but it's not related to our word for cube. Anyways, so the next thing I would want to work on is adding um, ambient occlusion. So in Minecraft, ambient occlusion looks like these corner shadows between like corners of blocks, which look, makes like voxel games look very nice. And I want to add that, but it sounds really complicated because you have to run it on like every vertex of every face so like four times per per face there are six faces in the cube so like 24 times that's a lot and you have to check for each vertex you have to check the three neighbors around it because that affects what how dark it is I don't know it sounds I'm like I'm just too lazy to deal with it but I set up like example blocks here that's what these blocks are for I just manually added them to like test every case so here there should be like a slight shadow even though they're like only touching by a corner apparently, their Minecraft adds like a slight shadow here. And then here there's like a shadow along this side. Here the shadow is kind of dark. And here, here, the shadow is also pretty dark. And so if you surround this block, uh, if there's like a single hole, single block hole in the ground, it should be fairly dark. And that's all from ambient occlusion. Um, I don't really, yeah, but this is, I don't, I don't really feel like working on this anymore, so that's why I'm making a video about it now. <laughs> Thanks, bye.